Next up is Matthew's request, and he wants me to dive into the second of many movies from the Swan Princess series. As constant as a star, I close my eyes and I Escape from Castle Mountain, also known as The Swan Princess and The Secret of the Castle in Europe, comes from the same team behind the first movie. And while Swan Princess wasn't on par with its competition in the 90s, it did garner enough of an audience to receive a sequel. I still have to wonder if it was even worth doing, but it's bold of them to do it anyway. I imagine this was due to Disney going through their direct-to-video phase, where a lot of their iconic movies got follow-ups that didn't show up in theaters. 1997 was the same year that we got Beauty and the Beast, Enchanted Christmas, so why not jump on the bandwagon? At the very least, Rich Animation Studios gets to improve their 2D animation since the last time we saw them, though if it turns out to be on par with The Trumpet of the Swan, then we might be in trouble. For now, let us watch The Swan Princess, Escape from Castle Mountain. Wait, did I rip the wrong movie or something? I mean, I bought the 2D film collection, and Castle Mountain is on the same disc as the first movie. But no, I didn't mess up. They just reused the same opening from the original Swan Princess, only to add the second part of the title afterwards. I guess they were really proud of how it looked the first time. We open with some individual setting up a crossbow trap. My guess is that he's planning to assassinate one of our main characters, because we quickly shift over to where our main couple live. It's been a year since Odette and Derek have married, and she is trying to arrange something with Bridget, who we last saw as Rothbart's assistant. I guess she's part of the good guys now. Okay, so far I'd say everything looks... Real nice. You'd think a year in the castle would have taught you how things are done here, but then again, there doesn't seem to be a lot of servants, so they have to be responsible for their own upkeep. Right now, it feels like a story where one significant other is always busy, because Derek is preparing to receive the King of Lincolnshire on Sunday. I should note that we have a lot of different voice actors this time around. Derek, for instance, is now voiced by Douglas Sills, Queen Uberta is voiced by Christy Landers, Bromley is voiced by Owen Miller, Lord Rogers is Joseph Medrano, John Bob is voiced by Donald Sage McKay, and Speed is voiced by Doug Stone. But at least Derek sounds a little like how he did in the first movie. Catch. Don't let me forget that. It needs to be, uh, half shade darker, guys. I mean, how else will you match the background colors? And yeah, it seems like the animation quality is about the same as before. Meaning it's above the likes of Good Times or Golden Films, but only comparable with something like Fern Gully. Of course, there's still that bit of inconsistency when it comes to details. Like when Bridget lights three candles in one shot, only to show one light on the next shot. Anyway, the bad guy we saw earlier is causing some trouble, so Derek is going to check it out with Bromley. I saw the brute who started the fire. He's a huge fellow with an ugly face. He's got powerful arms, and he's deadly with a bow and arrow. Don't lose him, Puffin. Wait, what the? I thought Odette was the only one who could talk to the animals because she was the only one who turned into a swan. Either I just forgot about something, or... Or they always could talk, they just chose not to. At least they have an idea on what the bad guy looks like, and everyone does what they can to slow him down. Of course, none of the animals are able to stop him, but here's Derek to show that he hasn't lost his touch with a bow and arrow. <laughs> After the encounter, Derek tells Puffin to hide what he's doing because he doesn't want Odette to worry. Though I don't think he has much to worry about since she's willing to go out and help the people who were affected by the fire. If anything, he should be worried about himself. That was an interesting way to spend our anniversary. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> huh? Today's our anniversary? I mean, why else were you having that dinner earlier? Maybe it's this exhaustion from work, 
But you'd think he would still remember the day he married someone. At least Odette is understanding and he's feeling guilty about it. Now he just has to do better as promised. Meanwhile, the assassin, who we later learn is named Knuckles, no, I won't make a Sonic joke here, makes his way to the mysterious Castle Mountain to meet with his master, Clavius. He was apparently Rothbart's partner and also a master of the Forbidden Arts before going into hiding because of Rothbard himself. While his power is yet to be seen, I will say, where Rothbard had a little class to his villainy, Clavius seems more comedic and juvenile. But today, today, Derek met his match. And now that he's out of the way, I'm gonna go back to our old castle and get the Forbidden Arts, proving that I was always the greater man. I was gonna say, why not do that when Rothbart was dead? But then you remember that our heroes occupy the castle now, so there you go. Given that Clavius has no magic power right now, it would make sense to have someone kill Derek for him. Otherwise, getting in would be a piece of cake since there's hardly anyone in the castle. But I digress. Anyway, Queen Uberta has received birthday cards for her 50th birthday. Surely he wouldn't treat me so impolitely. Oh, where is it? Oh, he's so busy with his new kingdom, he's forgotten his old mother. You were insisting that he get married. And yeah, that's what happens when you become a ruler. You get swamped with work. Also, while she was a bit eccentric in the first movie, I think she's even more dramatic here. Uh, a message from uh, Prince Derek. Yes! Let me guess. He's holding a ball in my honor. Uh, no, 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 no. He's established a new holiday. <laughs> I guess doing direct-to-video means they don't have to hold back on what is funny to little kids. I mean, what's more funny than a self-obsessed queen on her birthday? Literally anything else. Anyway, Derek is really set on going out with Odette today because he's delegating the investigation to Rogers and Bromley. Speaking of Odette, she's chatting with Jean Bob, who still insists that he's a prince, despite what happened last time. But Odette gave you the kiss, and you're still green and funny looking. Something went wrong, that's all. I am a prince. Sure. Anyway, Derek shows up to have that date. Odette, I'm really sorry, but some, some big clues have come up. I gotta go after this guy. What? Dude, you literally told Rogers and Brownlee to go investigate. You don't need to get involved right now. I know one of the clues is major, but you don't need to get involved right now. Seriously, this whole debacle can be resolved if he just realized that he has servants who can do the work that he can't. Yes, it's important to take your princely duties seriously, but don't let your personal life wither away because that'll affect your ability to do your job properly. This leads into the first song of the movie, 17 minutes in. Kind of magic. Now you see him, now you don't. Used to be, he'd drop anything for me, but not lately, he won't. He used to slay dragons to keep me from harm. Wait, dragons exist? Rothbard turned into some freaky bat creature, but I didn't think dragons truly existed in this world. And like the first movie, the songs in this are hit and miss. But this one is certainly enjoyable, because it shows the love our main couple had before Derek got swamped with work. And given the use of footage from the first movie, it's here where you can make comparisons between it and this movie. You can kind of see the difference in quality as far as character animations go, but the backgrounds are still at least well drawn and detailed, so it's not as bad as the Trumpet of the Swan movie. Moving on, Uberta whines about being forgotten until a large balloon basket comes for her. It has a happy birthday mother message on it, so it's nice that Derek took the time to prepare this. Though, why the creepy clown? Well, welcome aboard, dear queen. And now, I'd like to point out some safety features. But there are none. <laughs> I see nothing bad happening here. Anyway, they take off. Uberta has some 
funny lines about one of the people who sent her a birthday card, but then realizes she's not heading to Swan Lake Castle. Because the clown is actually... My place. <laughs> no one spoils my birthday! <laughs> Our villain, ladies and gentlemen, can't even scare a 50-year-old lady. He does sit her down, but she does nothing but yell at him. Seemed like she could actually stop him herself, but no. I've got a ransom note that tells him exactly how to find me. <laughs> Message for you, sir. I think the one mistake Clavius made was kidnapping Uberta instead of Odette. Because Uberta just talks and talks and gets on all of our nerves. But I'm not even talking about kidnapping a queen. Just your basic kidnapping. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't hear you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not listening. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am talking to you. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Admittingly, this could have been funny that Uberta is a hostage who's actually bossing around the main baddie. But that would require her dialing back her obnoxiousness and becoming somewhat competent. In any event, Derek learns about the kidnapping and sets out. He asks his human companions to watch over Uberta's kingdom while asking the animals to take care of Odette. This leads to Jean-Bob talking about Derek needlessly throwing himself into danger, even though he's a prince. So he begins fantasizing himself as a prince with a bad song. I've been a moving target. I've been a sitting duck. I've almost been an alligator's food. And all because somebody with more cat. Ew, that's just unsettling. It does get better as Odette counters him by singing about Derek's real character. That he's doing this because he wants to help others. Being a prince has nothing to do with it. And Jean Bob should know better because he saw what Derek did last movie. That and he participated in the final battle as well. Also, they seriously kept the two gators that were in the first movie. You'd think they would have removed them from the lake, but I guess not. Meanwhile, more Uberta ordering around Knuckles while Clavius is complaining about how nothing is going to plan. If I'm going to spend my birthday here, everything must be perfect. I feel like this has been done better somewhere else. But where? Goodness, I almost forgot I still haven't solved the issue of my bed sheets yet. And what am I to do with such superfluously massive scissors? Where is the soft and silken cloak I saw earlier? I vow to leave no cloak intact until it is found! Oh yeah, that! That series did the royal hostage hijinks way better than this movie! Clavius orders Knuckles to take care of Derek. In the meantime, Clavius takes the balloon and infiltrates the castle. And considering how, again, there don't appear to be any other servants, it would seem pretty easy to just... Go get the Forbidden Arts. But instead, he chooses to go talk to Odette. I came to pick up something. The Forbidden Arts? What are you talking about? Derek destroyed all that when Rothbart died. <laughs> You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? You could have gotten them right here and now, instead of telling Odette what you're gonna do like a friggin' idiot. This is probably why Rothbart left your sorry ass. Because you're a dumb villain. Hell, I even miss Rothbart because he at least tried to be intimidating on top of his monster form. But this guy? He has nothing! Old Rothbart worked on the Forbidden Arts together. Clavius! Also, it seems like Bridget knows who Clavius is. So she tells the animals to find the Forbidden Arts before he does. Sure enough, they get to the evil MacGuffin first, which is in the form of an orb. And this is why you don't stop to gloat, you stupid wizard! Our heroes go to free Odette, who was locked up beforehand, but because we have to make fun of Jean Bob some more, he accidentally locks everyone inside the prison. Now they need to warn Derek about the trap he's getting into, and there's only one way to do that. Oh, I wish I could fly, Odette. I'd kill out that window. That's it! Change me into a swan. You must know something about the Forbidden Arts. 
It's the only way to save Derek. This seems like a clunky way of bringing back the swan aspect of her character. And they even bring up her inability to change back if Clavius gets the ore. So Odette is taking a big risk here. It would seem interesting if Bridget knew some forbidden arts herself, since she's been around Rothbart for years, but we never actually see it happen. Watch. Do it! Someone's gonna pay for this. What? It also would have been neat if Bridget fought Clavius with magic, seeing as how she rips off her clothes to show her old attire. But instead, we get a dumb chase sequence with a song. Frog, frog. No, no, no. If that thing hits the ground, this whole place will explode. Oh, in that case, one fear. At this point, I have to wonder if our main couple will spring a few guards besides their animal friends. Why is their castle so darn empty? I'm starting to think that this movie is not very good. Anyway, Derek gets caught in a rock slide trap, but he manages to avoid it by doing this. or impossible. You decide. Of course, we get more traps ahead, and now the situation feels dangerous for once. There is even this ravenous wolf to deal with. See? The story can be genuinely gripping if the writers let it, but instead we are overrun by obnoxious writing. Um, did someone put in an animation frame they shouldn't have? Anyway, Knuckles traps Derek in quicksand, but Odette later shows up to get him out. He's not sure why his wife is a swan again, though he doesn't have a lot of time to think about it. As they head home, Clavius forces the animals to bring the orb to him. He strands them in the well after he got what he wanted, but the animals later escape thanks to Jean Bob. They then catch a ride on Clavius's balloon. What am I, a slinky? You keep forgetting John Bob. No fear. What? Stowaways! No, he doesn't hear them. Instead, they just fly to the mountain castle thing that this movie is supposed to refer to, but it's hardly a factor in the story. Odette and Derek spot the balloon and follow it to Castle Mountain while Clavius prepares to make use of the orb. Now he can grant himself actual magic on par with Rothbart, but not without a song. You may not like my newfound power, but I think it's totally hot. And you may hate the way I use it, but am I concerned? I'm not. Because the power to create is mine, and the power to change, oh joy. The power to rearrange your life And the power to destroy Okay, I will admit, this is another okay song. Michael Lanning does the singing voice for Clavius, and I honestly like the vocal work he does here. If this villain wasn't as childish, I would have dug his little rock number. And it helps that he's demonstrating his newfound powers. That said, he still doesn't notice the animal sneaking around, even as he's breaking stuff they're hiding in. Moving on, Odette is told to fly ahead while Derek goes to take the lift. But he has a run-in with Knuckles, who shows him why he's called Knuckles. The fight ends when the latter almost falls off a cliff, but Derek saves him in time. This doesn't impress Knuckles, though, because he captures Odette when she comes back. Now Derek has to catch up as his wife is about to be dropped. Man, here I thought Knuckles could have redeemed himself given all the comedic stuff he did with Uberta. But I guess the writer said no. The animals help up our main couple, and all the while, Uberta continues to roast Clavius. On the other hand, no matter what you do to me, I will always remain a queen whose birthday it is. It's been a whole day since your kidnapping. Unless today is the day. So he tries changing her into an animal. Shut her up! And I hope you like bread and water. 
because that's the daily fare in prison. What doesn't talk? A fly! Yes, yes, a fly! You could have opened with that, dumbass. Derek then shows up to take on the big bad, while Odette and the animals free Uberta. You're the luck and key at your service. Ooh, I'm being rescued by little animals? Oh well, I'll go with it. <laughs> okay, that one nearly got me. Also, funny how Clavius is only good with magic when it can lead to a cool action set piece. Speaking of, he's about to kill Derek with a spell, but when it gets deflected, it hits Sean Bob and leads to this. Oh hey, he actually turned into the guy whose reflection he saw last time. Oops! I'm a prince! I'm a... I'm a... I'm a... I'm a frog again. Oh, and now Clavius remembers to use the right pain spells, leading to this moment. Yes, John Bob is dead. They actually allowed it to happen. Derek gets the orb, and now Clavius can't attack him without risking its destruction. Our main hero wants to free Odette from her swan form, and when he does, we'll destroy the orb after. But Clavius isn't just gonna let them leave. <laughs> They make it seem like only Odette can get away, but shortly after, everyone flies out just fine. Sean Bob is still dead, but our heroes think that the moon has the magic to help him and the Swan Princess. And to no one's surprise... <laughs> you saved us all, Sean Bob! You had no fear! I will rip your beak off if you say it again. You're a prince in my eyes. Oh, and Derek had fireworks planned for his mother's birthday. So she's happy. Anyway, the movie ends with Derek and Odette having a picnic. Rogers comes over to tell him about the early arrival of the King of Lincolnshire, but Derek tells him to have someone else deal with him. Almost as if he learned something. Far longer than forever Nice of them to bring back the best song of the last movie. Anyway, that's Swan Princess, Secret of the Escape of Castle Mountain, or whatever. Holy cow, this movie was something. It's like they sunk to the level of good times and golden films when it comes to humor. The villain is an even bigger joke than Rothbard, and the story wasn't that good. There was some potential to be had with Clavius, but you just can't take him seriously because of his childish personality. The animation is still alright, but there are more errors than ever before. Probably a result of having a smaller budget and going direct-to-video, but even compared to some of the Disney direct-to-video sequels, this one doesn't stack up well. There's also nothing about Castle Mountain that is important enough to allude it to in the title. It would have made sense to title it after the Forbidden Arts, but alas. This movie isn't really worth the watch, and only reminds me of how Rich Animation Studio can't get much right with their sequels. And I don't think it'll get better in the third Swan Princess movie, if I ever get around to it. But next time, we're going fast with a live-action movie about our favorite blue blur. I'll see you then. If you hide inside your shell. So I'm telling you straight, it's great when you learn to live your life with no fear. Ten times ten! And the adrenaline's pumping your heart.